And one of the things, if you don't mind, I can tell you, one of the things we're doing is I'm trying to read as much as possible because I know one of the things that medical, mental health people say is during this period of time, you need to kind of limit actually the amount of news. It's a bit overwhelming. So if you can have two times a day that you check in. So I'm always practicing. I'm, this is my, I'm downstairs now. This is my practice room. If I were to turn this around, you'd see all my records and books and, and all those kind of things. And so I've been trying to read. And here's what the, the, can I share three quick books with everybody? Yeah, please. So this is my first book. I'm rereading. I've read it twice before. This is my third time. I have it here. This is Man's Search for Meaning. And rather than give you a book report, can I read one quote from you? Please, He's, please. He says that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So he said, we are no longer able to change a situation. We are challenged to change ourselves. It reminds me of that quote, a quote by Epictetus that says, circumstances don't make the man. They only reveal him to himself. And so that's my, been my attitude. And that's why I'm rereading this book, because he was a Holocaust survivor. And he had to figure out how to change his state of mind in the midst of all this, this death, this horrible death around him. And he emerged with this amazing book. So it's Man's Search for, for Meaning by Victor Frankl. Do I have time to change another one? Yes, please. Uh, or, or show you another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the next one is called Hope in the Dark. And it's by Rebecca Solnit, S-O-L-N-I-T. And the book has been called An Antidote to uh, pessimism. And one quote from her, it says, to hope is to give yourself the future. And that commitment to the future makes the present inhabitable. Inhabitable, right, right. So it, it's like you can be in the present when you have hope for the future, essentially what she's saying. Right. I love the book. I just started this one. And my final book is this one here. I'm trying to go quick for those that are bored with my books, but I love to read. <laughs> if I were to turn my camera around, maybe I'll turn my camera around. You can see my books. And if you yeah. see them, say yes. Those are my books right there. Wow. You see, that's our bookshelf. And that's just, I got, more in the, I got more in the back, but we have too many, but we should really open up our library here. Here's the, the final book and it's called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And that's by Yuval Noah Harari. And he basically says in this book, I'm on my second time reading this because I really wanted to get in it. If you know my books, if you look at them, they look like rainbows. So they, they're highlighted with my different color highlights. And he says that we must constantly reinvent ourselves. And he argues that uh, artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence will literally change and take over our modern day existence. One skill or one quote from him, he says, skills will become obsolete in a decade and therefore in need of constant renewal. The ability to adapt to whatever the world needs will therefore become the vital learning required by the whole of humanity. The social, economic, and political models we have inherited from the past are inadequate for dealing with the future. And he points to the fact that we have so much noise now, so many distractions. You know, one of the interesting things is when I go play at a club or something like that, when the music gets good, which is usually when Bobby Floyd starts playing, <laughs> <laughs> but when the music gets good, um, everybody takes out their phones and starts filming. And uh, that's interesting because everybody goes to that device. But what I want to offer people is, that, you know, a meditation teacher always says to you, be here now be here now. So the fact that you're taking that and some would say, I'm, I'm, I want other people, I want to share that and other things. But it's almost like when I see people at a park and they're playing, well, they're not playing with their kids, they're filming their kids. Right, right. And you should actually be pushing your kid in the swing and getting in the sandbox that was nothing more fun to me, get the sandbox with my kid, have her run on top of me and you know jump on me and that kind of stuff. I don't need to film that. I need to experience the love that that, uh, what, what comes out of my soul when that moment is happening. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to absorb through this uh, constant and never ending learning uh, while I'm uh, sort of here in, in this place where we aren't allowed to go around and constant never ending practicing.